Hello, my name is Peter Kraus from Mycian. I want to give you some first steps in using Microwave Wizard. Here's part two, uh, starting with uh, an assistant. Yeah, to start the assistant, we go to File, Start Options, and then to the menu item start assistant. Then you see here the start assistant and the first you have to do is to enter a project name. Because we want to make a very simple example, so we create a filter later on within a filter assistant, so we call it assistant filter. So then it asks for a circuit name and we call the main circuit assistant underline filter underline main but the assistant already fills out that field so we don't have to enter anything there so we leave it like that. The next the filter assistant asks for is the frequency range. So I want to create a filter in the KU band. I just give a double click here and it fills the start and the stop field with uh, the certain frequencies. It's in here it's like 12.4 and the stop frequency is 18 gigahertz and you use the number of mo uh, frequency steps will be ah, 500. The next we can do is the sweep type change, uh, change the sweep type so and because we have 500 steps we want to switch to adaptive sweep so it will use maximum 30 frequency steps and using adaptive sweep so then we press next again so now the filter assistant has asked for the cutoff frequency that will be used for all the elements. So this is not the cutoff frequency of the fundamental mode or whatever mode. It's the highest considered cutoff frequency of the modes that are used inside of the different sections of the filter. So actually it uses the 20 times of the highest operation frequency. Uh, frequency. So this is 270 gigahertz. So we can even increase that, for example, to be more convergent, so I say 500 gigahertz. The next is the connection. Connection means it uses the number of the cutoff frequency, the highest considered cutoff frequency, and use 20% of that to connect these between the different irises, so neighbor irises is with the empty waveguide. So the empty waveguide will use 20% of 500 gigahertz to use those modes to connect the neighbor elements. The next question the filter uh, start assistant asks for is the symmetry. We make a very cr easy uh, H-plane filter, so we use an electrical wall in the XZ plane, a magnetic wall in the YZ plane. The XY plane is not important in this case, but we have plan or we want to have planarity. That means uh, we have we switch to planar. And because we use a rectangular waveguide, you can see here this is a planarit a, pl a planar H plane filter type. Of or the iris of that. So we leave it like this. The radial symmetry doesn't have to any to have any value because we have a rectangular waveguide and we don't need that here. So the next will be a uh, default waveguide setting. We don't use it at the moment here, so it's not important for us. So we press next again. The next setting is uh, the material setting, we can leave it as it is. We have vacuum or air, the, m the metal is ideal, so we can leave it like that. So
So the next setting is actually only applicable for two-dimensional finite element and three-dimensional finite element, but because we don't gonna use that here, we leave it or we change it a little bit to so 0.5 and maybe to two millimeters in 3D FEM. Maybe you wanna extend that filter to whatever, so maybe maybe you're gonna use later on 3D elements, but at the moment it's not really important. So we press next again. So now you see some buttons and they show the some built-in tools and those are the filter assistant and the taper assistant or we can use some tools from the macro li uh, library. Those macros are written in a kind of visual basic dialect and are they are in the macros folder so you can even change them and edit them but we want to actually use the filter assistant so we're going to click on the filter assistant now it asks first it asks for a project name so uh, he makes a suggestion it calls it assisted filter and we leave it like it is so we say create your projects and we say create After the filter assistant has started, you have to fill out some fields. First of all, the name of the filter. We call it F1. So then we enter for the first stop band the stop frequency. So make it somewhere in the middle, just just 15 gigahertz. So the next line is the S11 and so S11 should be in this range by minus 30. So you see on the start the first stop band the second stop band they have the same uh, attenuation to minus 30 dB. Um, now we go to the pass band say so we start with 15.4 passband ends with 16.4 make it very easy and S11 should be the same same oh say minus 25 dB so and now uh, we ask uh, it asks for the second stop band the beginning so and it's 16.4 so we say it's well, 17 gigahertz so then the kind of filter type we leave it as it is chabby chaff and then we press next so now you see four different areas the first one is it asks what kind of filter type is it a rectangular waveguide filter or a circular waveguide filter we leave it as it is we leave it as a rectangular waveguide filter so and then the middle it asks for the type of iris so I mean make it a very simple rectangular with a rectangular iris so we double click on this so and it fills out already some fields um, and we say you can see on the left side here you can see uh, uh, the assistant already created two variables a1 and b1 and now we have to say it here a1 is a1 and B1 is B1. Th these are the outer rectangular waveguide dimension for the iris element. The next one, A2, this is the width of the rectangular iris and there we use a certain variable because that is actually the variable the filter assistant is changing. So that we have to call tune. So B1, uh, sorry, B2 should be the same size like the B1 because it's a planar filter, so we call it B1. So the iris height is exactly the same height like the outer rectangular waveguide dimension. And A2 has the variable or the first variable called tune. 
ZL is the thickness of the iris. So we just give one certain value, say one millimeter. A0 and B0 are displacement parameters and because we want to have a symmetrical filter there is no displacement so we leave it as it is. And here you see a parameter that's called cut i and that means this is the internal cutoff frequency of the iris itself. So b I said before that we always use the cutoff frequency as a controlling uh, value. So the highest considered cutoff in the iris will be 70% of the computation cutoff of the iris. And as you remember, we entered in the beginning 500 gigahertz. So internally in the iris, they will use 70% of 500 gigahertz to connect the two halves of this iris. And the iris actually is a kind of a connection of two step discontinuity. So this step discontinuities will be connected with a little small empty waveguide of the length ZL like one and they will use 70 gigahertz internally to connect these modes. The rest of the parameters are not at the uh, important at the moment so we leave them as they are. Th the first step, is uh, the next one is how will we the variable A2 because we want to tune it. That means the filter assistant is just looking for the right value of A2 for each waveguide cavity section. So, so actually this tune variable is exactly the same like here. So we have to define a min value and a max value. So actually the min value should be maybe more than zero so we define maybe one, but the maximum should around uh, should be around the value of a. So it can't be bigger than a. So we say maybe 15 millimeter. So we press next, and we'll see what happens. Yes, and it gives us some intermediate results. It says the filter order is about five. Is a five use about six irises, the center frequency is 15.9, the center wavelength is about 23.49644715 millimeter, and we leave the precision that is the assistant is looking for, it's five digits behind the, the, the five digital, and we use a cubic spline to do approximate the simulation. Um, here you can see the Chebyshev values and the inverter values. So if you, the next step will be that the assistant has to calculate the different irises. Actually, we have to have six irises. Because the filter is symmetrical, that means we have three times the same iris. You can already see that here in the Chebyshev values. If you look at that, those Chebyshev values are all the same here. The, the first is identical with 5, 2 is identical with 4, and so on. And the same with the inverter values, you can see them, they are symmetrical. So it will actually simulate or try to find three different irises. And we press the button and already finished. It found three irises, and so we can press next. And here you can see the filter geometries. It found three different iris width. So A2 underline 1, A2 underline 2, A2 underline 3, and certain lengths of the cavities. So, and because you don't want to have problems in the variable list, it gives you a uh, suggestion for a prefix of the variable so they don't interfere with others so we say f1 and when we after we press finish should create it should have created here you just zoom in you can see the first half is already created and the main circuit the same is created so uh, the assistant created two filters uh, so two sub circuits and 
first is called f1 half, it's actually the half of the filter, and it is referenced in those sub-circuits elements. So we save it again so that we have everything sure, uh, safe, and we just start running the project. So, and now we see the response and everything is fine. If you see the filter, the goal function of the filter, actually the assistant creates a goal function as well, so so if you need a final optimization, you just can start optimizing this project. Okay, thanks a lot, and you will see the next part